Good afternoon, the ladies, gentlemen, non-binary peoples. This is Bronson's By Any Means Necessary Fantasy Football Talk for Tuesday, November 8th, 2022. This will be my waiver wire video for week 10. Can you believe we're already in the double digits, double digit weeks here in this football season? I don't know if it's me or it's you, us, collectively, but this football season is flying, flying by. And I've noticed through the last couple of weeks that um, the less football I watch, the better my fantasy teams do. I don't know if it's just a coincidence or if it's some unfortunate luck because I enjoy my football watching time. Uh, but if, if it means my teams are going to succeed, then um, I guess I won't be watching. Um, although this week... I don't have anything else going on. I'm not on vacation. I don't have a friend's birthday party to go to. I should be able to watch. We'll see how my teams do. If my teams continue to do well, then I'm going to know it's just a coincidence. But if my teams suck this week, then I guess I'm done watching football for the season until the playoffs. Or until uh, the fantasy season ends, which is usually week 16. So, um, Waivers, yeah, it's pretty uninspiring bunch this week. I do have 10 names for you though. Best 10 names I can come up with, though I'm not really enthused about most of them. Hardly any of them really. Uh, but they're the best 10 names out there to, um, to catch you up on my life. My car. Um, it was the radiator. The radiator completely gave out on me. I had to get it replaced. 500 bucks. So... Yeah, I fell behind a little bit. Just paid my rent today because I just got paid by Uber today. So I paid my rent and then I put gas in my car. So I'm down. I went from $850 in my account to $45. <laughs> and I got $45 to last me till Tuesday. Um, UPS will pay me on Thursday. It's not going to be a lot of money because I missed two days. So I only got paid for three of five days. It's going to be a rough week. But I'm going to work as much as possible this week and see if I can get like a $900,000 week. I haven't done a $1,000 week yet in Uber, but I'm going to try. Um, also, I have to kind of conserve my gas, too. So, um, but yeah, I need to make as much money as I can this week so I can get ahead because I got, I still got some, still got some bills due, some bills to pay. I applied for an apartment in Tucson today, $20.00. $20 application fee. I used my UPS money for that. So, I'm on, so I got $45 in my main bank account and then I got like $3.50 in my UPS money. So I'm pretty hard up right now. So uh, I'm hoping I get approved for this because I can't afford to apply for another one uh, for another week. Although there are, are a couple other options that I have that I've asked. You know, I've, I've inquired about availability in January. I'm waiting to hear back. Um, they'll probably be like, well, yeah, we got some openings, here's the application, here's the, the fee, blah, blah, blah. I hate application fees. I think they're illegal, or they should be illegal. They're shady as hell. Uh, I think you should only have to pay them if you get approved. And if you, or if you do pay them, you should get a, a refund once you don't get a place, but whatever. It doesn't, doesn't matter what we, us peasants, think. Rich people are going to do what they want to do. Um. What else? What else? What else? Nice day today. Perfect day. Um, sunny, 50 degrees. It's great. This is this is the the days I live for. Um, I don't know what else is going on. Not much else is going on. Um, but if I could approve for this apartment, I'm gonna have to start saving money. Because I had, like I, like I think I said in my last last week, I had to uh, spend all my apartment money on my car, so I have to re rebuild that. Um, it's also it's like the worst time because my credit is down in the tanks again right now because of the you know the whole IRS situation and them not accepting my money or them losing my fucking money order, which is still pissing me off to this day. Uh, so I got that tax bill on my record, and then. 
I have my credit, my small credit card payment from when I rented the car in Tucson. For whatever reason, my debit cards are not working, so I had to put. Um, I couldn't pay off the entire fee of what I owed with my debit card, so it's sitting on my credit card. That payment is due next week, which I intend to pay when I get my, you know, when I get paid again on Tuesday. But <laughs> you know, they're gonna this apartment place is gonna run my credit before. You know, before next week, so it's, it's, it's still going to be reflected on there. Um, and it's a place where the deposit is based on your credit. So the better the credit, the bit smaller their deposit. I'm hoping that this place will work with me and allow me to make payments on my deposit. Like, you know, instead of, you know, because the rent is like $900, uh, just add an extra $100 to my rent. I'll pay you 1000 for eight months or whatever until it's paid off or you know some kind of arrangement because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get $1,700 in two months um, what will help me if I get approved and do move is I'll probably sell my stuff because I'm not paying for a fucking moving truck if I have to spend $1,700 on the place <laughs> so if I sell my stuff that'll help and then also I won't have to pay all the money that I was gonna use to pay my rent here in January, I can just use to pay my rent there, so that'll help. I just need to come up with the, I guess I just need to come up with the deposit before I move there, which is looking like it could be 800 bucks. So, no, I, I think I could do that. I could probably manage that. That shouldn't be too much of an issue. I'm just, two months doesn't feel like a whole lot of time to, to you know, move. There's still things here I want to do, you know, I didn't really get to, um, one of the things that I was really looking forward to doing when I moved here was going to Blazers games. Um, but that didn't really work out because I didn't have a car most of the time I lived here. And then also, you know, there was COVID for like two years where there weren't, there weren't even letting fans at the game. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to go to some games this month, this month and next month. Um, I actually think about going to the game on Tuesday because it's super cheap. The tickets are like eight dollars. I know they're, they're super high nosebleed seats, but for eight bucks to go to a game, I mean that's cheaper than like it's cheaper than going to the movies, which is what I usually do when I'm bored. Um, you know, that's the price of a price of a soda at the, at the movie theater. So I mean, I might just do that. Buy those cheap seats. Go to the Spurs game, even though I don't really care to see the Spurs. That's why that's why they're so cheap. Because the Spurs don't have anybody we're seeing, um, but, but yeah, I want to do that. I want to go to some games. Uh, there's still places around here I want to see. I didn't really get to do as much Wednesday wanderings as I wanted to do as much road trips as I wanted to do this summer. Um, and the weather's, you know, not going to be nice enough. I mean, today, today's great, but. I I need to make some money. I need to catch up. I don't have I don't have to, yeah I don't have the money to be going on a road trip gas wise. It's gonna have to wait till next week, and you know next week who knows if we'll get any nice weather or anything of the sort. So <sighs> yeah, still stuff I want to do. Still a trip. Still one more trip I want to make this year. But I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's gonna work because uh, it's gonna be during it's gonna be like the week before Christmas and think that's the one Sunday of, of the year where UPS makes us work and so I don't <sighs> financially I don't really want to miss out on that but also um, it's mandatory kind of I mean unless you're like dying of sickness or sick or something you have you have to go and so uh, uh, <sighs> I don't know if it's gonna work out or not, which is a bummer. But I'm still going to go on one more trip somewhere this year, at least one more, probably just one more, uh, giving the financial um, situation I'm in right now. Uh, I don't know, maybe, this will be, maybe I'll just take this year off from Christmas. I just won't buy Christmas presents for people this year because, um, you know, maybe my nieces and nephews. I already bought my grandma something. 
I don't know. I usually just buy one uh, one gift for a person anyway, but. I don't know, my whole life I've just felt obligated to do that, whether I could afford it or not. I made it work. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to end up buying people gifts under this already, because I always do. But, just got to survive this week. Things will be good after this week. Knock on wood as long as nothing happens to my damn car, or, God forbid, me. Although I do have great health benefits from UPS, so I should be okay. Um, I think it's, uh, no matter what the situation is, if I go to the doctor, uh, as long as I'm working for UPS, I have, it's a $10 copay. Like, I remember my coworkers were telling me about how uh, their UPS benefits covered their entire, the labor, the whole birth of their child. They didn't have to pay a separate, they didn't pay anything except 10 bucks. So... That's great. And then there was one person who I think she was undergoing some cancer treatments, and all she had to do was pay the ten dollars to go to the appointment. She didn't have to pay anything else out of pocket. So the benefits are great. UPS benefits are great. Um, I should utilize them more, but I don't really have any major health concerns. Um, Oh, I need to probably should go to the dentist. I haven't been to the dentist since I was a kid. I mean, I know my teeth are fine. I take care of my teeth. I'm always taking care of my teeth, but I could probably use a good cleaning. Anyways, I've wasted enough of your time. 12 minutes. Let's get to the waiver stuff. Again, uninspiring list, but the four teams on by this week, four AFC teams. We got the Jets, Patriots, Ravens, and Bengals. So we got two AFC North teams, two AFC East teams. You're probably going to be looking for some quarterbacks if you got Lamar Jackson or Joe Burrow. You might be looking for some defenses if you've got Baltimore, New York, or New England. You might be looking for some well tight ends because Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely are on by. And then... Yeah, so you're going to be looking for some players to cover some buys. i got a list for you. Let's start with the quarterbacks. Justin Fields, again, number one quarterback. I, I can't, um, I hate that he's looking so good fantasy-wise because he's a Chicago toilet seat bear. <laughs> but you can't deny what he's been doing the last three weeks in fantasy football. He's been outstanding. He's been winning me weeks. In fact, I was telling you guys about how like I needed to get two wins this week. I got him. Both of the people, both of the two opponents I needed to beat this week, I beat, and I beat them handily. Kick their ass. That girl's uh, my friend's wife, no longer undefeated. I beat her ass with Justin Fields <laughs> um, because my other quarterback, Justin Herbert, he hasn't been playing so hot. I didn't trust him last week. I went with Fields, and then I had Darren Waller in my lineup, who got me nothing, but I still kicked her ass. And then the other one, um, I don't have Fields, but. Um, I kicked his ass anyway. So I had a pretty good week other than those two weeks, but those were the two matchups that really mattered to me. And then Jimmy Garoppolo, um, quietly over the last month, has been putting together, has been stringing together some pretty decent fantasy starts as well. So if you're needing to replace Burrow or Lamar, those are your two best options. Justin Fields, at this point, really shouldn't be available in any leagues after tomorrow morning. Tight ends, Greg Dulcich. I got a couple of rookies for you. Greg Dulcich has been outstanding through the first three weeks of his season. He started the season on the pup list, I think. Um, but came right back out on the field. Instantly uh, became the number two option in that passing game for Denver, uh, making Cortland Sutton a little obsolete. I mean, Cortland Sutton's a guy you kind of kind of got to hold, but he's terrible right now. You can't play him. You got to bench him. And then Kate Otten looks like the tight end to own, if there is a tight end to own in Tampa Bay, even with the possibility of Cameron Braid returning to the field this week. I still like Kate Otten more. Because um, for whatever reason, Tampa's never really fully um, given the reins to Cameron Braid, despite the fact that he's been productive. So Kate Otten is the guy, the new Rob Gronkowski there. 
for Tom Brady. Let's do running backs next. Jeff Wilson, it looks like he's going to remain a thing. Um, it looked like he was, you know, he was going to be the guy in San Francisco. He was the guy in San Francisco for a little bit. Then uh, Christian McCaffrey arrived. Jeff Wilson became useless. And now Jeff Wilson gets traded to the Dolphins. And it looks like there's going to be a 50-50 split there between him and Raheem Mostert. Although I don't understand why. But Mostert has been a fantastic running back throughout his entire career. Um, when, he's, when he's playing. And he's healthy right now. Um, so... I don't understand why why Dolphins, especially with Mike McDaniel, don't really want to trust Raheem Mostert. Uh, but Jeff Wilson, Raheem Mostert, both going to be flex plays from here on out as long as they're healthy. And then Chase Edmonds, um, the Dolphins gave him a lot of money, and they didn't do anything with him. Uh, we know Chase Edmonds can play. Uh, he's not really much of a runner at the running back position, but very good pass catcher. Um, he might be a thing for Denver. Who knows? We don't we didn't really get, get to see them last week because they were on bye. Uh, but we'll see how that running back situation plays out this week um, against Tennessee and see how they utilize them out of the bye. I like Chase Edmonds' talent. I think he's I wouldn't say he's the most talented running back in Denver, but he should be the second most talented running back. He should, in my opinion, phase out Latavius Murray from that backfield. It should be the Melvin Gordon, Chase Edmonds show. Um, and Chase Edmonds is a much better pass catcher than both of them, so I'm hoping that he has fantasy relevance in Denver that he didn't have in Miami. He's a speculative ad, and then Rashad White keeps cutting into Leonard Fournette's touches there in the backfield in Tampa Bay. Um, this, he could be, um, he's not going away. He could be, become more of a factor as the season progresses. So Rashad White is maybe a guy to look into adding as well, especially if you have Leonard Fournette wide receivers. Michael Hardman of the Chiefs. He's had the touchdown three straight weeks. He appears to finally be a consistent um, fantasy contributor uh, as the wide receiver two in Kansas City for now, for this year. So, um, you know, if you need some wide receiver help, Michael Hardman's probably your best option out there. But again, I don't really like any of them this week. And we'll get to the other two lists names on the list. We have Terrace Marshall uh, ever since the Robbie Anderson experiment ended in Carolina and the Matt Rule experiment ended in Carolina. Terrace Marshall has had two semi-okay weeks um, and you know he was a second round pick. We know that he has some talent. He just needs the opportunity. He's Carolina's giving him the opportunity and he's doing okay with it so he might be a guy who if, if you're really desperate could be a flex option for you, but at least a good depth piece for the playoff stretch, the playoff run. And then Khalif Raymond of the Lions with TJ Hawkinson gone now and Josh Reynolds being, you know, not very good and being hurt. Uh, it looks like Khalif Raymond might be the number two guy in that Detroit passing attack and for what it's worth, that could be a fantasy relevant position. Um, although it's really going to be the Amon Ross, St. Brown, uh, DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams show, there could be a, some. Uh, there could be a useful role for Khalif Raymond. He has, if you look at his last uh, four games, they haven't been terrible. He's actually done some done some things with <laughs> with the, the catches that he's. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Um, in a normal week, you would never play Coley Raymond. He's just a depth piece. Um, but he's next in line. Should Amon Ra Brown, Amon Ra St. Brown get hurt, Coley Raymond's going to jump to the number one on the depth chart. So <laughs> he's a useful piece. And again, if you're hard up, having some, some like, uh, bye week blues, uh, Khalif Raymond has been pretty productive over the last four games. Um, 
and again without TJ Hawkinson, his role could expand and should expand because he's earned it through productivity. So that's it. That's the the very lackluster list of waiver wire targets here in week ten. Good luck with your waivers this week, um, this morning, tomorrow morning. I mean, and um, I'll I'll be back tomorrow with defense special teams and tight end quarterback rankings for week 10 and uh yeah peace love and nacho fries i need to go i can back out to work lunch was okay for uber i got a five deliveries real quick like in an hour and then i sat there for like a half hour with nothing but garbage popping up on my screen so like i'm just gonna go home I was going to stay out from 12.30 to 2.30, but uh, I was done by 2 because there was nothing. After 1.30, there was nothing. So, um, But dinner time is usually pretty damn good. And then after, you know, from 5 to midnight, usually pretty damn good. So I make plenty of money doing that. So I don't really need lunch most days that much. Um, yeah, speaking of lunch, I didn't really eat a lot. I should probably eat, and then maybe I'll consider going back out before it gets dark, before the sun goes down, because it's a nice day, and I wish I would have kind of enjoyed it a little bit more, because um, it might be the last nice day of the year here, but uh, global warming, climate change is a thing. We, we, we get a lot of snow now. Snow that we never got when I was a kid. We get snow every year now, multiple times a year. And then we had the you know the 80 degree weather in November, which is not normal for here. So um, it's kind of hard to deny that climate change is real and happening, and uh, it's going to play a factor in the lives of the generations to you know my nephew, nieces and nephews generation, children, the children growing up today are going to live in a completely different world than the ones we live in now, weather-wise, I think. So we'll see how it plays out because we don't seem to be doing anything about it. And I, I can't say that I am not contributing to that. I drive, I drive a car that is, you know, uh, not wouldn't pass emissions if I had to test uh, it leaks oil and um, it's not electric not a hybrid but you know I'm in I, I'm in no position to be picky about transportation uh, so I have to I have to drive what I can drive what I can afford and what's available to me so um, maybe one of these days when I am I shouldn't say I'm not financially stable because I am making plenty of money. I can travel all the time, uh, but when I'm when my credit is stable and when I'm out of this hole that I've created for myself over the last four years, then uh, perhaps um, I will uh, be a better, um, more environmentally conscious with my vehicles. But for now. Um, it's just, you know, I do it. I drive what I can to survive. So <sighs> I cannot believe I've talked this long. This is one of my longest videos in a while. I apologize. Have a good day. Good evening. Bye.